Since my last video, just under two weeks ago, the novel coronavirus outbreak has continued to spread, now infecting more than 100,000 people worldwide. Much scientific research is being undertaken to try and understand the transmission of the virus, and in this video we'll discuss some of the recent evidence to try and explain why this novel outbreak is spreading so fast. So to briefly recap from my last video, in 2019, a new coronavirus infecting humans emerged in Wuhan, China. The outside of the virus is decorated with these spike proteins, and these spike proteins are important for it to get inside the two host cells. So what happens is, the spike proteins contain a receptor binding domain, and this can interact with a human host cell protein, referred to as ACE2, standing for angiotensin converting enzyme 2. And so the spike protein recognises this and it enables integration of the virus inside the cell. Once inside the cell, the virus can replicate and cause further transmission. So if we can prevent this interaction, can we prevent transmission? So this is one of the major challenges that many scientists are studying currently to try and find ways to prevent transmission because, as quoted, understanding transmission of the virus is key to its containment and future spread. And the urgency of this is now heightening since the number of people infected with this novel outbreak is more than 10 times the number that were infected during the 2002 and 2003 infection. So what we've unfortunately witnessed is a rapid spread of this novel coronavirus outbreak. But the key question is why? Why is it spreading so fast? And if we can understand why it's spreading so fast, that's another potential target to prevent transmission. And so what we've learnt from the genome sequence of the novel coronavirus is that the spike protein differs from its close relatives. And what this means is the biochemistry is different. So this very recent publication basically analysed the protein sequence of this novel coronavirus glycoprotein, the spike protein, and compared it to the closely related sequences of the other coronaviruses. And so what this paper found is that the novel coronavirus protein sequence for the spike protein has a specific furin-like cleavage site that's absent in other lineage B coronaviruses. So what does this actually mean? Well, what this means if we go back to the spike protein, a region of this protein is a site that is recognised by furin-like proteins. And what these proteins do is they cut the protein. And so you can cut the spike protein into different fragments. And so either furin itself or furin-like proteases are now thought to cut the spike protein, which could further aid its activation and integration into the cells. And so I already mentioned that the spike protein recognises ACE2, but it's now thought that cleavage by furin or furin-like proteins could also aid entry into the cell. And so whether this is important is really important to understand because furin is found in lots of different human tissues, including the lungs, liver and small intestines, which basically means the virus is more likely to be able to attack these different organs. And it could also explain some of the symptoms that have been observed for people with the coronavirus, such as liver failure. Nonetheless, more research is required to fully understand the importance of these furin-like cleavage sites and to try and understand which part of the virus life cycle it's really important with, as this will better be able to help us design effective strategies to prevent transmission. And so one way is to potentially use furin inhibitors. And this kind of goes back to what I said at the end of the last video, that if we can't find a new vaccine to prevent transmission, it's more likely that we're actually going to find something by repurposing previously existing drugs, such as in the case of furin inhibitors that um, are already around and modifying those for the coronavirus. So the presence of these cleaver sites then might explain why the novel coronavirus is spreading so fast, because the cleaver sites are also found in other viruses that spread easily, such as strains of the influenza virus. And so this is because instead of the spike proteins, these hemagglutinin proteins have furin-like cleavage sites. However, whilst this research is really exciting, we still need to be cautious because we don't know how important these furin cleavage sites are and they do require further testing. And then we're unsure if these furin inhibitors would even work. So we just have to be cautious for now and note that, you know, there are other 
virus as we've seen, such as the Spanish flu pandemic, and they didn't have these furin activation sites. However, we've still got the ACE2 receptors that are potential targets as well. And interestingly, it's also been shown that the interaction between the novel coronavirus sp spike protein and ACE2 is 10 times stronger than it was in the previous SARS virus. So potentially by blocking that interaction, we can prevent transmission. So the biochemistry, it seems, seems to be key to the fast spread of this novel coronavirus outbreak. So as always, thank you for listening.